a little paint can go a long way in refreshing the look of any room. Viewers often ask me about ways to refresh the look of their walls with some paint, and today I've got for you some great tips on selecting the right color, as well as some expert advice that will have you painting like a pro on today's Soflo Home Project. Welcome to SoFlo Home Project, I'm Elena Capra. If you're tired of staring at the same four walls like I am, perhaps it's time to change those wall colors. Paint is one of the most affordable ways to make an impactful change in any room. Today, I'll show you tips on selecting the right color, choosing the right paint finish, using cool paint apps, and give you expert painting advice. When you're thinking about starting a painting project, it's always best to first prepare, prepare, prepare. This way it makes for a much easier painting process and then there's also less room for error. So where do we begin when you wanna change the color of those walls that you're tired of looking at? I always like to start with inspiration. Get inspirational photos. Go online, look on social media, look through if you have some design magazines, just get an idea of where you want to make that change. Now, when you're ready to go with getting those samples of paint, it's always best to go with a small sample. And they vary in size based on manufacturer, but you don't wanna go and buy a whole gallon just to test a sample of paint. So there is quite a few different sheens for paint. So it always starts with your flat finish, okay? Great for your ceilings, great for walls that have imperfection because it's not going to highlight the imperfections. The shinier you go with the paint, the more you see those. The next step up from that when it comes to paint sheen is your eggshell finish that has just a little bit of sheen and it's perfect for bedrooms, for you know living rooms, dining rooms, all of those you know gathering areas that aren't super high traffic, but this will be a little bit more forgiving to clean than a flat paint. Now, one up from that. Say you're a little bit more worried about a higher traffic area. A satin finish is sometimes a great choice. Satin is just has a little bit more sheen, a little bit more cleanability, and perfect for some of those spaces like your kitchens, baths, hallways, more high traffic areas. From there, we go up to more of the gloss sheen. So we got the glosses, you've got your semi-gloss. Some people still like the sheen of a semi-gloss in a bathroom, and that's a great choice as well, or in a kitchen if you don't want high shine. But if you want more of that high shine, you're gonna go with the gloss finish and that looks beautiful on a lot of wood trim and a lot of baseboards as well. So when it gets into those, it's more about a little bit of a preference. They're both great options. So when you're considering your paint, there's another big decision you have to make. What type of paint are you using? Are you using oil-based paint or latex? I would say most of the painting you're gonna do is gonna be in the interior, the latex paint. Now, it's easy to clean up. Simply soap and water on the brush, easy to clean up on your hands. So it's the perfect paint for the weekend warrior or the DIY because cleanup is simple. The color will be more durable as well as will not emit as many odors. It's not toxic. It could easily be disposed of as opposed to the oil-based paint. The oil-based stuff is a little bit different. What is it used for? Mostly woods and certain kinds of trim and unfinished woods um, and sometimes for even exterior type stuff. If you are working with the oil-based paint, a couple of things to remember. One, cleaning your brushes is not gonna be as simple. It's gonna need mineral spirits or some sort of paint thinner to get those clean. And very important, you cannot dispose of oil-based paint in your home. You cannot pour down a drain. It will ruin garbage disposals in a kitchen. It's a toxic material and needs to be disposed at the proper areas within your city. So very important, if you're using it, do not pour it down a drain in your home. Coming up on SoFlo Home Project, we take selecting a paint color to the next level. Welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and today we are talking about refreshing your home with paint. So there's lots of different options when it comes to picking your paint colors. And I know sometimes it can be overwhelming, but I wanted to talk to you first about the different ways that you could choose your colors and then show you a few 
easier tips to do that right from your home. So what these are here, these are a paint fan deck. And as an interior designer, I have a ton of them in just about every paint manufacturer that you could name. Um, and I love it because I go back and forth between different types based on color and look that I'm looking for. These are always helpful because it does give you the full variation of color from a truly saturated shade right down to the lightest version of that. So always going from dark to light. And when you're picking your colors, I think this always helps you get the different variances, if you feel like one is a little bit too strong, you go to the lighter. And you could also modify formulas at the store as well. All right, so sometimes when you're looking at the color samples of paint in this way, it's helpful to get your immediate colors, but there are times where we need to see a little more than that, right? So there are some great ways, all of the different paint companies have different apps that you could use either on your, on your smartphone, on a tablet, or even on your computer where you can do so many different things like upload a photo of your room and show what the paint color you chose will look like in that space. And I find this to be a very helpful tool. I think in design, one of the things that people struggle with the most is visualization. So when you have tools that are really great to visualize what the space might look like, I think it's such a great way to really commit. And where this becomes extremely helpful is when you're making a drastic change in paint in your room. So if you're going from super dark to really light, showcasing it like this can really make a difference. So here I have a photo of a media room where I wanna just check out different ways to see what the walls could look like. Here's the blue and I'm able to select a different color palette of all the colors I like from their explore color chart. I can find different blues that I like tells you the color code, you could add them to your palette, and now we can go back and see what it's gonna look like on the photo. Maybe I wanna see what these walls will look like light. So I pick a color, pick the paint feature, and we are gonna click on those walls, and right there you can get a great view of what it might look like, and perhaps, perhaps I wanna try gray. So here I'm going to check out the light gray. You could save this, you could share it, and it really is a great tool to be able to visualize what your space would look like. And on a lot of these apps, you could even have links to order your samples. So if you're looking at a couple of colors and need some samples mailed right to you, there's a function to do that. Some of them even help with calculating the amount of paint you might need. It's something you could do right from your sofa. On a Saturday afternoon, after you finish watching Sofa Home Project, you could sit and visualize what your new space would look like. So I wanted to give you guys one of my favorite tips when it comes to selecting your paint colors. It's easy to narrow it down, buy your small samples, but the one thing that I don't like to do is paint directly on the wall because sometimes I think it gets very confusing. You end up with a lot of swatches. If you decide not to paint, then you gotta cover that. And it's sometimes hard to see true color when you have it painted on an existing color. So. What I love to do, and I'm sharing this with you because it's something simple that you can do at home, is paint your colors on eight by 11 foam core boards. A lot of the paint stores might sell these already. The reasons I like this one, it's a white background. The color in its truest form really pops on here, okay? Two, you could paint a much bigger sample. And then you could walk around the room with the samples and see it on different walls with different light at different times of day. So for example, here, I can get a true feel of what the color looks like, move it next to the trim. If I wanted to see what something looks like with the furniture, I could even hold it closer, which definitely helps in determining what's the right one to look at. I love having these on boards. I think then you could, again, look at it in the morning, check what the color looks like later in the day. In natural light is the best way to really see what the true color is, but you have to remember, your lighting is such a big consideration when it comes to also picking that color. These are definitely one of the best ways to truly not mark up your walls with a bunch of samples, because again, I think once you determine it and you decide, say you're going with this color, pale oak, it's best to then, if you want to take it further and paint that swatch on the wall, why not? But until you get it narrowed down to deciding that's the one you want to use, sometimes it's easier to do it this way. Coming up next, see how having the right tools makes a job much easier.
welcome back to SoFlo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra, and I hope that you guys are enjoying our paint episode with all things painting and hopefully get inspired for some of your own DIY paint projects at home. Okay, so we have discussed a lot of different things about selecting the right color and sampling your colors and what type of paint to use. But now it comes down to which tools do you need to buy to do the job. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you some of my favorites. I love painting and just the things that I use when I'm doing my own painting projects. And then we're gonna check in with some of the experts as well. Very important tool that I love to use is the angled brush. This is essential when you are cutting in around the trim, doing corners, just for that precision work. I tend to like the one and a half inch size. I like working with a smaller brush for accuracy so I can really get that fine line. Once you get real good at this, you might not even need as much of the blue tape. Okay, so now when it comes to the paint roller, standard size is what you'll need for most walls. Some people like the smaller one for more accuracy on smaller areas, but for most of your painting, you're gonna be using this size. Now, we've got this, but say you have a higher ceiling and you don't wanna get up on too many ladders, having an extension rod, they come in many sizes. I'm just gonna show you this one. These are easy. These will screw right on to the standard rollers, and then it makes it much easier with even a standard eight foot ceiling to get that painting job done. Now, you're gonna want to have one good sturdy tray, at least one if you're doing single color. And then I like to buy the liners because these are inexpensive, and then it maintains the sturdiness of this tray, and then you could just dispose of the liners every time you change colors. And then you might just wanna make sure you have your water on hand and an area to store the brushes when you are doing work with the roller. So we've got your rollers, we've got our trays, we've got our, all of our tools. Now let's check with the experts to see what they recommend. Joining us today is Bryant Goyara, who is a field supervisor with True Colors Contracting. Bryant, thank you for joining us. Hey, how's it going, guys? Bryant, so I think one of the hardest things is figuring out which type of foam roller to use. So depending on, depending on the texture of the wall you have, flat, orange peel, knockdown. That's when you go and you and you pick a specific nap. Now, if you have knockdown, you wanna go with a three, four, something a lot thicker, because you wanna get in, in the crease. So when ready to begin a painting project, where do you start? Ceiling, walls, trim? You always wanna start from the, from the top down. You wanna start from the ceiling. Why is that? If you go ahead and you paint these walls before you paint the ceiling, when you decide to start rolling the ceiling, you might get some drops on the walls. That's why we always go from the top down. We cut first and then we roll. Most people don't care when you're doing flat, you can do either or, but if you're doing satin, for example, if you if you roll first and then you cut, you will always see the cut line. So oh I would recommend to cut and then roll. Do you have any tips that you would share that are your like, you know, maybe top two tips to DIY painters? When you open one of these up and it's brand new and you haven't used that, as you can see, you have a whole bunch of lint all over it. So you don't want to have lint on the walls. What we do is we'll grab this and we'll put a blue tape around it and then just spin it off. We'll probably do that one or two times, or two or three times to make sure that we take out all the lint. That's to remove the lint because if you paint this with the lint, you will start seeing boogers everywhere. You don't want that. <laughs> so you don't want to paint with a fresh foam roller. You always want to do something to make sure. You want to take off the lint. For sure. Well, that is a great tip. Brian, thank you so much for sharing these tips with us. And All right. Our viewers are really gonna enjoy this, and I did too. I've learned a lot, so thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you to you and the team at True Colors. Well, thank you for having us. Next on SoFlo Home Project, we show you some useful painting tips from the experts. How do I turn my house into a home? That's one of the most frequently asked questions I get as an interior designer. And let me tell you, it's all about creating personalized spaces that suit you and your lifestyle. There really are no rules. On Zoflo Home Project, we're committed to sharing design ideas with you to help you achieve this goal and make your house more beautiful and comfortable. Follow us on social media for more design advice every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. on Instagram for an Instagram Live session. I'll be answering any design questions you might have and having fun with design. And now, back to the show. 
Welcome back to Soflo Home Project. I'm Elena Capra and we have been exploring all things paint all day and I'm hoping that you guys are getting some great tips for painting your own home. I want to share another one of my favorite tips when it comes to painting and this is one that will save you a lot of trouble. A good thing you could do even though the, the color codes tend to stay the same is I always try to take a photo of the label so I have it because sometimes paint ends up dripping on it and then you can't see it. So I always try to snap a photo of the formula so if you ever need to match the exact thing, you never have a problem getting that perfect match. So that was just a quick tip, but let's see what our experts have to say. So today I have joining me via Skype is Ravi Gultron, the owner of Gulf Atlantic Painting as well as a painter with near 30 years experience. So I don't think we're gonna get better tips than this right now. Ravi, thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Thank you for having me on. What tips can you give our viewers? Maybe like some of your top tips that you would suggest for, you know, the DIY painter at home. Yes, definitely. I think the number one tip that I'd like to offer to DIYs is purchasing good quality paint. If you're not a painter, you've never done any, have any experience on painting. If you use cheaper quality paint, it tends to turn into a nightmare. You'll have a lot of problems with coverage and also get good painting tools. Get good brushes, good rollers, and you should be on your way. That is a great tip. Now let's talk a little bit about how long do you keep paint? When do you suggest people throw out those old containers that are in the garage taking up space? I would say anywhere between four to five years. What happens also is if you use that same paint you purchased four years in advance to try touching up your walls, the color will not match. It's better to just go buy a new gallon of paint and repaint your wall with it. Okay, so no, that is a great tip. Now, what is your favorite type of paint to use when, like, do you have a certain finish that you prefer? My paint of choice would be flat. Flat tends to not show any imperfections on the walls. If you do have pets, kids, or the sort, you would want to use a paint that has a sheen because all paints that contain a sheen, be it eggshell, matte, satin, semi-gloss, is washable. Now, what is the best way to clean if you do have scuff marks? That's a very, very good question. I have seen people use magic erasers to clean the walls. I would say don't do that okay. because it tends to take the color off the wall and then you have a bigger problem where you have like a scuff mark on the wall. So just some soap and uh, water and just, you know, you just wipe it till it comes clean. And if it doesn't, then you do have to go into your garage, pop open a gallon of paint and touch your walls up. Well, Robbie, those were some amazing tips for our viewers. And I thank you for sharing all of your expert advice. I know you're on a job site and you need to get back to painting. So thank you for taking some time out of your day to share these with us and our viewers. Oh, it was a pleasure. You have a wonderful day. Thank you. Okay, so we've gotten expert advice, we've gotten painting techniques, we've gotten all of that stuff, but now when it comes to colors, I thought I'd share with you a little bit about what we're seeing trending in neutrals. Colors that we have seen a lot of over the last few years always range in the grays. And for me personally, the warmer grays are really tending to continue to trend because they are neutrals that go with a lot of stuff. When you're making that change from beige to gray, sometimes it's better to go a little bit safer in that warmer grayish, the taupey grays. Also, a lot of white. White is definitely still a great color and sometimes white with just a hint of color, just a hint of gray, just a hint of beige. So I just also wanna share with you my favorites because I've always narrowed down a list when I design I kind of, over the years, have been doing this for a long time, I've compiled lists of my favorite colors from a variety of the different manufacturers, and I wanna share those with you, so it can give you guys maybe somewhere to start if you're thinking about adding a great neutral. And now let's check in with Hunter Frankie to see what advice he has for us tomorrow on SoFlo Health. Hey, Hunter. Hey, Elena, what's happening tomorrow on SoFlo Health? Well, I'll show you, it's a wild adventure. Well, almost, take a look. Besides hanging out at Zoo Miami with Ron McGill, we check in with Dr. Claudia Caprio to talk about how animals affect your mental health, Monica of Essence Nutrition has some grocery shopping tips while you're in quarantine, and some comedians in South Florida are still here to make you laugh even though the comedy clubs are closed. How? Well, you'll have to watch tomorrow at 12.30 right here on Local 10 for SoFlo Health. Thanks, Hunter. We'll be watching. 
To our viewers at home, we hope you enjoyed today's episode and that it got you super inspired to be able to pick some great paint for your next home project. Remember, painting a room creates a huge impact in the design for minimal cost, so it's a great way to freshen up your home for spring. And now more than ever, there really is no place like home. So Flow Home Project. If you missed any part of this makeover or if you're looking for more design inspiration, make sure to check out all episodes online at SoFloHomeProject.com. You can also submit your design disasters and you never know, we could be knocking on your door to help. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next week on SoFlo Home Project, we tour a beachfront property with a lot of personality. This home makes a bold statement by breaking many design rules. <laughs>